The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Shalom, Alakim. Welcome back to the broadcast. Peace be upon you. I'm Sean, your host. The website can be found at www.scriptureandprophecy.com. This morning, I wanted to kind of revisit this idea. Uh, a few, maybe a month, a couple months ago, I did a podcast called Warning and Thinking That He Has Delayed His Coming. Uh, something along those lines. Uh, maybe it's been a few months, and I want to kind of revisit that. Um, so we're going to, I want to reread that parable in Luke, uh, and then we're going to go to the Old Testament, um, because I want to go and check out what I think is kind of a foreshadow of this kind of thing. And, uh, you know, we live in a time when there's been a lot of hype about the return of Christ, and with good reason. Uh, but we've also, you know, many of us have been duped or we fell into the trap into believing some of these signs and things and expecting Messiah was going to return on a certain date or a certain feast or things of that nature. And then you kind of get burned by that several years in a row. And then you get to the point where you kind of, if you're not careful, you'll stop paying attention as much and you'll stop being hopeful as much. And you'll just kind of, it's really easy to start, you know, when you're really on fire for Christ and you think, man, he could return at any minute. I mean, you, you're, you're watching your P's and Q's, right? You're walking in righteousness and holiness. You're praying like you've never prayed before. You're studying the Bible like you've never studied before. You're, you're preparing yourself because you think Messiah is going to return. I need to be ready. And that's really the posture and the attitude that we should all have. But when that starts to wane, and you start to think, well, maybe he's not coming back as soon as I thought. Or, you know, maybe things really are going to keep going on like this for a while. Maybe there, maybe you know, maybe some of these timeline things that some of these people have come up with really are the way it's going to play out. And if you're not careful, you'll start to drift back into the world. You'll start to drift back into old habits that cause you to sin and cause you to stumble and... And there's grave warnings about this in the Bible. And so let's reread that parable in Luke. Uh, and then I want to go all the way back to the book of Exodus and, and look at a story there. And so my hope and prayer this morning is, it's just, is that this podcast will kind of in, in vigor in us and renew in us, uh, me included, a spirit of anticipation for the return of the Lord and a renewal and, and a desire and a hunger for walking in righteousness and holiness and for God's word. And, and so that's kind of my hope this morning. So let's go to, if you're at sitting at home and you've got a Bible handy or something like that, you can go to Luke chapter 12. We're going to go down to verse, starting with verse 42. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to become drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Now let's stop there. That seems harsh, right? It seems severe. And it is. And so what's the sin here? It's, you know, he basically what Jesus is telling us is when he returns, if he finds his servants 
being wise and faithful and being a good steward of, of the mission and of what the Lord has provided for them and given to them, he's going to be so happy that when he finds them doing that, he's going to make them ruler over all that he hath, right? He's like, okay, you've, you're trustworthy. You've, you've done well with what I've given you. You've been faithful. Now you see everything that I own because I'm the master of it all. You can rule over all of it. Because I can trust you to do that. But what if he comes back and his servant has said in his heart, well, I thought he was going to return, but he, he hasn't came back, so he's delaying his come. I'm just... And he begins to slip back into sin. That's what it's describing when it says that he's going to begin to beat his men servants and maidens and to eat and to drink with the drunken. In other words, he's just going back into the world, going back to carnal ways. And then the Lord does come, pa- come back, but because he slipped back into the world, he's now not expecting the return. He's, he's become distracted with the trinkets of this world, with the pleasures of this world. He's no longer being faithful in his stewardship to the Lord. And so now he's not even paying attention. And the Lord comes back in a day when he looketh not for him, at an hour when he is not aware. And it's too late. He's not ready. He hasn't prepared himself. He's went back to the world. And it says that he will be cut asunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Now, friends, we all know what the portion of the unbelievers is. Right? Unbelievers will not inherit Verse 47 goes on to say, And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself. So listen, the punishment is more severe for those who know the truth, but still say, well, yeah, I know that's true, but I'm still going to kind of do what I want. I'm still going to, I'm still going to play and I'm not going to take this real seriously I'm not going to be a good steward of what the Lord has done for me or given me. I'm just going to continue to enjoy the world. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. It's going to be punishment for that. Verse 48, But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. Why? Because it wasn't like he knew. He, he made his mistakes in ignorance. Okay, there's a... Listen. To whom much is given, much is expected, right? Much is required. If you've been given a lot of knowledge and understanding about the Lord and about how he works and about his word and about the times that we're living in and you still continue to not care, not take it seriously, not prepare yourself for his return you are going to be held to a higher standard than the person who's caught off guard because they were just flat out ignorant about it. And he goes on to say in verse 48, For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Verse 49, I am come to send fire on the earth. You hear that? You know, when Christ comes back, he's coming back as king and judge. Right. This is this is very serious. The world will weep at his return. They will hide in the rocks and say, "Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb." I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? And this is the description that Peter gives us about his return. If we go to. Second Peter. And Peter reminds us, look, the Lord is not delayed like you think, okay? And this is really, these all fit together. You know, we just read a parable about the warning, about warning, what happens if you say in your heart, the Lord is delayed in his coming and you go back to the world. Second Peter chapter three, starting with verse nine, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
Okay, so we're like, oh, when's he going to come? Well, he's not delaying because he's just lazy. He's delaying because of his great mercy and his long suffering. And he's just wanting more people to come to repentance, come to know his son, Jesus. But Peter's going to remind us of something. Look, it may seem like he's delaying. He's not, he's not fulfilling his promises. But it's not that. It's just he's long suffering, but the day's going to come. He says, but the day of the Lord will come. As a thief in the night. In other words, it's it's not going to come and fit in everybody's timelines. It's not going to come and fit in everybody's end times charts of events. It's going to come like a thief. In other words, very unexpected. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt away with fervent heat in the earth also. And the works that are therein shall be burned up. Remember what Jesus said. He says, I come to send fire on the earth. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in a holy conversation and godliness? It's Peter saying that, knowing all this, knowing that this is what's going to happen, and it's going to happen at a time when we don't know, it's just going to come like a thief in the night, how, you, how should you be walking? Seeing then all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. He's saying, you know what? All this, all this that people put all their hope and trust and slave away their whole lives to obtain it's all gonna burn all of it and knowing that it's all gonna burn and that there's a kingdom to come after that what how should we live our lives now back to the parable And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. The Lord Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And you say, that's harsh. Like, that's really harsh. That's really severe punishment to pay. Listen, God's attitude about this particular issue has not changed. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the book of Exodus, and we're going to turn to chapter 32 in the book of Exodus, and I'm going to read uh, parts of chapter 32 to you. And I want you to see if you see what I see. I heard somebody talking about Exodus chapter 32, but in a completely different context uh, last night. And And when I heard that, I started making this connection to what we just covered. And I thought, wow, it's like a parallel to this exactly. And so I want to share that parallel with you. Now, for context, remember, Moses has went up on the mount. And so at this very moment, as we're going into chapter 32, he's up there with God. He's up on the mountain with God, communing with God. God's giving him the Ten Commandments and telling him, you know, all the information that he needs to have. And he's going to come down the mount with the Ten Commandments, right? And see if you see the parallel here. Let me start... In chapter 31, just read the last two, read the last verse 18, and then move into chapter 32. So, verse chapter 31, verse 18. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him on Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. And now we move into chapter 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, he wot not what has become of him. So the people, Moses goes up in the mountain. He's communing with God. He's getting things prepared for the people. They're getting impatient, and they think, well, maybe he's died or something. Maybe he's not really coming back down. He's delayed and is coming. All right, we want to go back to the world. 
We want to go back into Egypt. We want to worship the false gods and live the way we were before because clearly he's not coming back anytime soon. Do you see the parallel? I mean, it's like an exact parallel to this conversation. So, we see that Jesus' attitude about it is pretty severe. I'm going to cut you. That servant's going to be cut asunder and he'll be appointed with, his portion's going to be appointed with the unbelievers. Right? The servant who prepared not himself, neither did according to the wills, is going to be beaten with many stripes. I am come to send fire on the earth. Okay. Let's see if God's attitude was any different back in the days of Exodus. So let me start over. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and your daughters and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them with their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. So Aaron's still trying to make it about God, right? He's like, he's like, well, I need to do what the people want, but, you know. So he makes a golden calf, and then he says, Tomorrow will be a feast unto Yehovah, a feast unto the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and to drink and to ra- rose and rose up to play and the in other words they were doing some really uh, ungodly things folks verse 7 use your imaginations and the lord said unto moses go get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of egypt have corrupted themselves they have turned aside wickedly They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto it. These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make thee a great nation." So God sees what's going on. They've returned to the false gods, to the ways of Egypt, and he's ready to annihilate them all. He's telling Moses, get out of the way. I'm going to burn all these people to the ground, and I'll just start over with you. I would say that God's response is pretty severe, right? He really has an issue with this about him bringing you out, setting you apart, and then you straying off and going back to the world. And Moses besought the Lord his God, and he said to the Lord, Why did thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, and to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and thy servants to whom thou swearest by thy own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all his all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which brought to do which he had thought to do unto his people. And Moses went down from the mount, and the two two tables of the testimony were in his hand, and the tables were written on both of their sides, and the one on the side and the other, and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. 
And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither it is the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but it is the noise of them that sing, Do I hear? And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands, and he brake them beneath the mount. He took the calf that they had made, and he burned it with fire, and ground it to a powder, and strawed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink it. I mean, look. So God wants to annihilate everyone. God, and Moses intercedes on behalf of the people. Do you, do you see the parallel? You know, Christ intercedes for us. But then when Moses returns to the camp and he sees what's going on, it's time for punishment. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let the anger of my Lord, let not the anger of the Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people, and that they are a set of mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us about of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me, and then I cast it into the fire. And there came out this calf. And when Moses saw the people were naked, because there was a lot more than dancing going on, if you know what I mean. For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side. Go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor and let the children of, and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses and there fell of the people that day 3,000 men I think we can stop there you see Jesus said we, he, the person who goes back to the world doesn't prepare himself looketh not for him when he does return he's going to cut him asunder what happened to these people the Levites went out with the sword and slayed those who were worshipping the calves the golden calf there's only a few more verses we might as well finish the chapter right for Moses has said consecrate yourselves Today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to the Lord. Preadventure I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of the book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron had made. Now, interestingly enough, in this context and conversation, we have this issue about being blotted out of the book. And so Moses is like, please forgive them. If you will not forgive them, then just blot me out of your book. And of course, we're talking about the book of life. And God says, that's not how it's going to be. He says, and the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Now, does that sound like something that Jesus would say? Well, let's go to Revelation chapter 3. The letter to the church of Sardis. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. 
I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch. Do you see the context here? I will come on an, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know the hour which I will come upon thee. Look, friends, we're commanded to watch, to pay attention, to be ready. And there's grave warning about not being prepared and to think that he's delayed and not pay attention. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but will confess his name before my Father. And before his angels, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Friends, what do you think that means for those who do not overcome? Who do not remain in the faith? Who fall away? I'll just let the word speak for itself. You heard what it said. It's real easy right now to think, man, the Lord must have delayed in his coming. It'd be real easy to slip back into old habits, into old sin, and to get distracted. And so my word for you this morning is to hold strong. Repent. Hold fast. Let's just read verse 3 again. Why does it have to be my words? Let it be God's word. Remember, therefore... How thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. Hold fast and repent. That's the message for this morning, friends. And I know some of you are probably looking forward to the Enoch study. And uh, occasionally I just have to switch it up because there was a word that I felt like the Spirit had put on my heart. And that is this word this morning. And so, Lord willing, we'll resume our study in the book of Enoch next week. Take it to heart. And I pray that it's pierced your hearts. And I, I hope that it causes you to really fall on your face before God and to draw near, to repent, and to get back in line. If you be out of line. Hey, real quick, change in directions here. Uh, if you're willing and able, please consider supporting this mission of truth. You know, we have about 12,000 subscribers and we have about 30 people that support this, the broadcast. So that's a very, 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 very narrow and small percentage. And so for those of you who are willing to support this work, who are being fed by this and see the value in it, I just want to say thank you. You make a huge difference in my family's life and my life. You not only make this possible, but you just ease the burdens for me uh, on a personal level as well. So thank you so much. Uh, if you're wanting to do that, the links are in the YouTube description, or you can go to scriptureandprophecy.com. All the links are there. Uh, and uh, I encourage you to do that if you're willing and able. If you're not, uh, then I just ask for your prayers for the podcast. And uh, those are equally as important, if not more important, is your prayers and that's so those are the ways that you can support the podcast if you can't do it financially please do it through prayer and ask god's blessing and, and grace and mercy to to be upon this work and pray for it to go forth and to, to accomplish its goal so thank you so much for that scripture and prophecy.com have a great weekend peace and grace be with all of you and may all of us have a spirit of longing and waiting and anticipation for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Till next time, God bless.